Hi. Hi. There you are. You know, I wasn't I sure. <laughs> well, I I have it all set up and I didn't hear it ring. So then I heard my phone. I went, oh dear, something. I was just over in the chair waiting for it to ring. And <laughs> well, here we are. <laughs> well, you know, you know, I just want to start out. You know, you and I don't get a chance to talk very much. And, and no. you know, this, this is kind of an interview and it's also just a, a, a pleasant conversation because that's There's the way I always like to do things. And um, so I, I just want to say that um, there are always very special people who I, I have the real pleasure of working with. And um, you and Don have truly, truly, truly been very, very, very special in oh, this whole work you. that we've done together. <laughs> yes, it'll be two years coming up, right? Two years in November. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm I'm just going to tell you what what the experience has been like for me, and then maybe you can kind of share what the experience has been like for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, you, you know, when you're conversing with someone, you're conversing. You're you're talking with them. You're not necessarily doing drills. You're you're talking. And that's kind of been the approach that we've taken with each other, the three of us. Um, it's it's been about uh, talking and teaching you how to help your husband talk. It's not right. about exercises; it's about talking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm not gonna be doing much of the talking because I, I want you to be doing the talk. I want to stimulate you to talk today. Okay. Okay. Uh, and 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 one of the things that that people need to know about stimulating talking is the power of the question. Yes, the so, embedded question. Yeah, yes. or or any kind of question. So any kind of question. Yeah. Yes. So the question I'm going to to tell you is, what has this whole experience been like in the last two years <laughs> for you? Well, I well. For me, it, it mostly has empowered me. I feel like I'm not just standing by, um, you know, do your exercises, do, do your homework, do your, you know, it, which I shouldn't have to tell them that, but you know, <laughs> we all need a little push, right? And um, it, it's more, uh, participating in life your everyday uh, routines you can you you can use this method daily for everything pretty much I at least that's the way I have approached it um, and and you know some some daily things are, are routine and so you're doing the same <laughs> the same thing over and over and over again which Maybe as a drill in itself, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> but I, I it there have been times of frustration um, because it, it nothing is speedy <laughs> in this business. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> and I, I, you know, it's it's it'd be nice to see results instantaneously, but I've learned that that just isn't happen. It doesn't happen, but it it. Now, two years into this, especially in the last three to four months, the, the results of the work we've done have been nothing short of amazing to me because it's sort of like some things coming together. And and we're, we're um, I find that open-ended questions are being answered more readily, not all the time, but and not always in sentences, but definitely. And and other when other people notice it, it's also encouraging. So I would say that the whole experience has been for uh, positive all the way through. Always positive. I, it's not not a negative thing. I know I get negative sometimes. 
<laughs> Don will tell you. <laughs> you know. Yeah, she says no to me sometimes. <laughs> no, that's not right. <laughs> but I try not to do that, but it's it's um I I try to keep it positive. And, and you're a good role model for that. And and why I like to keep talking to you is because you are so positive and I don't hear negative. Um, I, I mean, by negative, I mean telling them, no, you're not doing that right. It's, it's always, here's another way or uh, the approach is, is so nice. Um, and, and I guess that's, I am just not a bystander. I, I, I feel like that, that we are uh, partners in this and and um all three of us really so, and friends <laughs> friends <laughs> whether you want us or not <laughs> no we i i really um our friendship <clears throat> excuse me our friendship has really grown i think and don and i you know you, when your communication is cut off at the pass if you've lost something and, and getting that back is, you know, even though we've been married 40 plus years, you don't always know what the other person is thinking. I say what you want about that. It's not always. <laughs> and um, it, so this has really helped us to communicate with each other uh, again after the stroke. So how how could you make a comparison? Uh, can, can you give me any kind of comparison of when you say it's helped us communicate again, kind of after the stroke? Yes. Can you kind of give me a comparison of whether it was like the communication or lack of after the stroke versus where you are now? Oh, well, there were uh, several months of, the 20 questions um, to get to anything, um, any answers. And, and on your talk that use gestures, use um, oh, communication boards or pictures. And, uh, you know, those things work to a certain extent, except the person with the aphasia has to want Okay. okay. Back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is typical. Isn't it? Um, in in acute rehab, they uh, the therapist, the physical and occupational therapist, wanted him to use a communication board, you know, with the pictures on, and and for whatever reason, he would not use it. And to give the speech speech pathologist credit, she said, I. He, I don't think he will use it, um, and I, I still don't know why he didn't want to use it. But he didn't, and um, and then we go home, and you're kind of looking at each other like, okay, now what? <laughs> now what? But it, I, I mean, and then it, you know, we had more he had more therapy the next year with a speech pathologist at the local hospital which was very good i mean everything has helped that he's that he's done but at first i remember uh being in the garage and trying to figure out he was trying to show me how to fix the weed whipper and uh it ended up let me just say after tears and shouting and you know, just I, I went to uh, the local um, big box hardware store and bought one, a new one. <laughs> this wasn't worth the it, it, it. And there were a few things like that that ended up like that, where I think now, uh, it, you know, if I knew if I had known 
this method maybe earlier on, although it, we did get into it er, quite early on, um, maybe those things could have been avoided, maybe not, but that doesn't happen anymore uh, now. We can get to what he's thinking easier than, you know, we can get there without having all that angst and frustration. And, um, it, it might take a, a little bit of more conversing, but we, we, we get there now in a pleasant way. <laughs> And, and, but yeah, there were there were several several instances of really um, really awful uh, not confrontations. That's not a good word. Um, this not being able to find out what he was thinking because he couldn't say it, and um, that certainly is not happening now, really ever. But at first it was tough. He didn't have too many. He didn't have too many words at first. He had very, very limited. He was very limited verbally at first. So, and I was told that was mostly because of the apraxia. But, um, I definitely think some of it was word finding also. But but if you aren't saying anything, it's hard to know what it's called. Yeah. yeah, it's in the practice of your face. I don't know, because he's not saying anything. <laughs> I don't know, and I I remember, I think I remember an email or, or something I wrote to you, and it said, well, his speech therapist said he doesn't have aphasia, he has a praxia, and he said, it doesn't matter, he's not communicating. <laughs> don't worry about, don't worry about the, the, uh, what the labels you said. So, I, I kind of put them aside and and just went with uh, talking to him and with him and conversing. Okay, let's and, talk. Let's talk about that a little bit. You know, I remember when we first started. I didn't know what your ex expectation was. Okay, <laughs> and. Um, I'm wondering if you could kind of tell us about what it was like uh, when we first started and when we first met and what, when, what we first started doing and um, uh, how that was as compared to kind of maybe the approaches that you had used previously. Well, the, big, the biggest uh, difference was we, we were talking to each other. Uh, I was, I was stimulating his speech with the embedded questions. I, I can't remember if we did. I know your book talks about, and, and we, I had bought your book and read your book before I called you. And with the sounds, him being able to say the sounds, he did that with his first therapist, the one at the after acute rehab, he he were really they really worked on, um, what are they? Ph phonemes? phonemes? Yeah, the, the sounds phonemes. of speech. Yeah, <laughs> sounds of speech for a year almost uh, working on phonemes and and so it was so nice to have a method um, start to have a method that you could put words together. Um, not sentences at first, but to be able to get a response to what I was asking him, or that that was that was really awesome because uh, the the other um, the things that we did were he they had him write uh, phrases on cards. Well, I don't think he did it. I think they did it of his needs, and then. Supposedly, he was supposed to pull these out when, when he needed them. Like, I want black coffee, or I, you know, to have these. Well, of course, the card's never there, or the piece of paper's <laughs> never there. <laughs> never there when you want the black cup of coffee. You know, the black coffee. It's always the cards. Who knows? Buried under this pile of papers. 
And and so that it's it it isn't that the other methods that he didn't get anything out of them. Um, he did, and it, it's just that for a practical day to day way to communicate, just didn't work for him. And he's never been an app person um, as since his stroke. He's he, we've tried some some of them he's used. Um, Especially when he was doing the phonemes, they they had. There's one that you could see the lips move, and, it's, and, and and he would go along with that. I would say, I would say his his first uh, speech therapist was not an app person either, really. And she she um, used that app for him, but not that wasn't one of her main th things that she used. Um, but um, let's see, we. He saw her for about a year, I think, about a year. Um, and then, of course, given the news that he had plateaued and we're done, there might have been, there There were probably some other reasons for that, but um, I, at the time, he was already scheduled to go to the intensive, and she she knew that, and, and also our insurance had <laughs> run out. Um, but she was really trying hard. She was coming to our house, and we were paying out of pocket and all that. So it it was hard for her to keep that up. She has a, had a bu busy practice at the hospital. Um, so, so I was so excited after the intensive to start really learning the the teaching of talking method because I had read the book and I was doing some of that and it seemed like already I was he was getting some speech back uh, talking to me when I stimulated his speech so I was super excited about starting our sessions and I had uh, talked to someone we both know about that you had worked with and she recommended you highly <laughs> and I, I just was excited about it and everything she said was true <laughs> positive and uh, conversational and uh, just uh, that you are a really nice person and I would say that's putting it mildly <laughs> so we appreciate your kindness thank you so what was it like? What was it like the day that you got the the sentence of that he had plateaued? Well, I I think I know. I knew it was coming. I mean, I just it it just seemed like we were winding down at the time, um, and and it we were getting ready to go to the intensive. So I was sort of prepared for it, but she hadn't really talked to me about it, but. I don't think Don was really ready for it, and the look on his face was just, he, you know, you get to know a person working with them, and he just had, uh, I think he had a good relationship with her, and and I I really think he still thought that, that, that if he didn't continue with her, that he was not going to get better. Um, so that, I, I think that was a real blow to him. And I, I don't know if he, at that time, I think he realized that going back to work probably wasn't going to happen. But, you know, you don't, you don't know that until you know it. <laughs> and um, and uh, I, I, I think that he, maybe that was a realization that, um, wow, this is not going well. I, my opinion of the whole plateau thing now is uh, that's when you need need to keep going. I just think that that's, that's when you need to really keep going. Really? I really think that. And I, I have to admit, there was there there are periods when it seems like, well, nothing's happening, you know. And uh, I guess we we had a occupational therapy uh, occupational therapist. Um, well, she, we haven't worked with her for a long time, but 
her opinion on that whole plateau thing for anything was that the body is integrating what it's learning. And I just, I think she was on to something. So I, I don't think you should stop. And the nice thing about the teaching of talking method is you don't have to. You can keep going. You can keep going. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. No, some days. He's, okay. Give it a rest. But, uh, but that, that is the beauty of this method is, is it, it's, I, I don't even think of uh, plateaus anymore. I just don't even worry about them. Why? Because I know that, that if, that there will be, maybe it'll go along like that and seem like a plateau, but it, it's the, the brain is, is rewiring or whatever it does to get the speech back. And it's going to be there at the end. If you keep going, if you just keep, keep stimulating, it's going to be, it's going to get better. I, I really believe that. I, I believe, I believe that you just, it's going to get better and better. I, I really have no doubt about that. And you now. have, and you have no doubt about that because we've seen progress. We've seen progress, lots of progress, actually, when you think about it from the very beginning to now. And even our family, even our sons have said that every they the one son sees him, um, even though we FaceTime, but sees him in person every six months. And he said, Oh, my goodness. Every time we get see him. He's better. I mean, his speech is better. And so, especially when other people notice it, it's, it's kind of encouraging. <laughs> and the people who know him the best, too. So, so what's a speech therapy uh, session like um, with you and with me? What, 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 what's it like? What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> well, do we want to divulge this, really? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, well, it's um, and there I, there are things that um, we have worked on, uh, you know, that that along the way. But basically, we talk about our lives and what's going on and what is interesting to us and. Um, we've taken shared photographs, <laughs> interesting photographs. We've talked about our trips. We've talked about people. We've, um, talked about what's been going on in the recent past and what we will do in the future. Uh, so it's sort of like, um, getting together with your friends and talking about what's going on. I, I guess that's the best way to put it. It's it's uh, talking about what what we're interested in or what's going on in our lives or your life. That's very conversational, I would say. You mean you mean the therapist shares information about his life too? That's, I mean that. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and that is, that's very nice. Yes. That's, that's how you make friends. <laughs> or not, <laughs> but we do. Okay. Yeah, we, we share things. Yes. So let's see. So what, have, what have you learned? Um, what are some of the key the key things that really sets your progress. In other words, what are the things that you're doing that are really contributing to Don's improvement? And what is it that you're doing that, I'm sure you've talked to other people and other caregivers and other wives. Oh yes. So when you 
So, so, <laughs> so when you talk to them and hear their stories, uh, and you think and you compare what they're doing to what you're doing and how you do it and your approach and your beliefs, are there any differences that you find? There's, there's one big difference of some people. Some people have in the approach, he, he or she, as a case may be, it's, they have to be in charge of their recovery and they, they go and do their rehab and uh, therapy. And I have my, do my thing. And now I don't know, not too many of the wives, spouses that I know are really like that, but a couple are, that's, that's the widest difference. Like I just, I go to work, I do my own thing, I, I, whatever, whatever on my life, and he does his. And he has to be in charge of his own um, recovery. Um, for whatever reason, that, that type of approach, I don't think would have worked for us at all. Um, and I just felt that, that things at home would be so much better if I could help him somehow, um, and and I so I would I was very very involved from the beginning, and most of the most of the spouses that I've talked to have also been quite involved, and um, and so, of course I talk about the teaching of talking to all of them. In fact, the book is loaned out right now. <laughs> I gotta make sure I get it back. So I, I, I thought I swore off loaning books out, but I just had to do it anyway. And so the 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 difference kind of is the biggest difference is the the person with the phasia goes to therapy, and the part care partner steps back. Some of that is necessary. I I think some of that needs to happen but on a day-to-day -day basis i mean and and the wives that i know are are like that feel this way too we're it's 24 7. you really don't get to step back i mean when when a person can't tell you what they need let alone conceptual things it's it's makes for a rough patch <laughs> which is how it was at first, trying to figure things out. So that's, that's probably the biggest difference in, in the people that I've talked to um, about the kind of therapy that they're going through. They go to therapy and then come home and I, you know, what happens after that? Depends on their therapist, I guess. But I, um, yeah, I, I think the teaching of talking. I, I talk to people about it, and and I, I know at least two or three of my friends, closer friends, have bought the book um, and are even using the method mm -hmm. to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. So, you've so we've worked together how long? Two years. <laughs> Two years. So, gone by fast, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, are there are there still things that you're learning? Oh yes, yes. Because I I it it's a I don't know it's a step by step process. I, I was thinking about this as I was uh, sort of going back in my mind about how things have gone. And it seems like so many things that he was asked to do early on, he was not capable of doing. 
and it seems like when we we started started to work together he only you only expected him to do what he could do at the time and it was it was a very step kind of a step by step process and i just think that there's more more coming that will will be able to work on we're not nearly we're we're not we're not really there yet. I I just know there's more. So have you always, always had new things. Yeah. So have you always thought I mean have you always thought that that you know this is where we are now, but I know that there is more and then more comes and then we work on that and then more comes. How how does that go? Well, uh you <laughs> you Tell or you were telling me how to ask embedded questions, for instance, and so I would start doing that, and he started answering them, and um, and and you, we worked on like looking at each other and and talking face to face, and a lot of times we still have to do that. It's you know it, it's easy to kind of go your separate ways and try to talk to each other, but um, and and. And so then, then you, you, we would get get kind of fluent at that, or get good at that, and then you'd give us another challenge, and another, one, another one, another one. But they weren't they weren't an impossible type of thing, and we always have fun in the sessions where we don't even feel like that feel that it's uh, oh difficult really um, we have a lot of fun we laugh and um, sometimes things don't go quite well because we're tired or having one of those days but that's that happens um, but we know the next time we get back at it and 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 so uh, and before you know it we're adding we're doing past tenses and future tenses and, and I'm going oh where's my grammar book <laughs> what is he talking about <laughs> it's brought back uh, English grammar yeah yeah and and to think we we're at that point it, it just seems unbelievable from from gestures and and we he still uses gestures and things but speaking more and more all the time so always new things i yeah. i just can't imagine that i don't think you ever run out of anything. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever run out of anything very rarely because i i'm always you know i and, and it's funny uh it it just happens naturally. I was working with a, a friend of yours today, and so we were working on this, and, you know, I'm going, you know, it's time we, I want to teach you something new today. <laughs> you know, you just work with uh, something for a while, and, and they get pretty good at it, and then, as if by intuition, it's time. It's It's mm -hmm. time to learn something new. And mm -hmm. and and that's a whole new a new gig with within yeah. the whole process because we're still working on all those other goals, but now yep. we're adding a new one. Yep. And uh, it's done in a very gradual way. One yes. of the one of the pleasant memories that I have that I'd like to comment, I'd like you to comment on, is that one of the things I've learned about Don. Is that he's a numbers man. And there came a point in our therapy when it was time to address numbers. Now, that's not really speaking, but I always knew that numbers were very important to him. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if you could kind of comment on that. <laughs> well, I knew that's one thing that didn't get totally... Uh, wiped out of his brain were, because he can look at a spreadsheet on the copper market and understand <laughs> it and 
I am thinking, yeah, okay, and, but you can't read the words. I mean, uh, a book or whatever. But the numbers and and like the budget, he wants to see the you know the bank statement till he looks at it. So, but saying the numbers was difficult, and so um, we started out with one through ten on little flashcards and we he went over um, one through ten being able to rec recognize uh, he recognizes them but to say them and I, I think we're through 60 now but but he's actually gone on I mean I, I we're, we've kind of gone with the cards up through 60 but we're working on it but it took several months of doing this regularly where he's gotten fluent at the numbers yeah so what was sometimes what, yeah go ahead what was the uh was there anything different about our approach with the numbers for him well i i don't think he never worked on numbers with anyone before so I uh, can't really comment on whether it was different or not or how anybody else does it, but um, that was never addressed at all. And I know that when we would travel, he would look at the signs for the speed limit and try to say them, and I would tell him what it is, and we'd do that over and over. But I, it was very good to start at one and go one through 10 and 10 through 20, <laughs> then it, it, it uh, made sense to him rather than just looking at the sign and me telling him out of the blue, this is 35 miles an hour. But he almost rarely gets them wrong anymore. Mm -hmm. It's almost always correct. Mm -hmm. And he's always telling me what they are. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, you know, that's the sequential part. You know, I think what happens, um, the one of the things I've learned uh, from all these years of experience is the importance of sequence. And, and you know, when a, when a child learns to walk, it's very sequential. You've got grandchildren, and, and you've watched how they crawl well you had your own kids too but and sure. you 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 have a review with your grandchildren now and you watch the sequence of you know crawling and then getting up on the table and holding on and then you know right. all of those things and that's kind of the approach that we've done with almost everything related to speaking that we've right. taken it all the way back to like single yes. words and then Gradually went to right. two words and then to three words. words. And, uh, and, and I think that, um, that that's been, um, you've been very good about um, keeping to the task of, of being very orderly with the whole process. Well, that's the advantage, I think, of meeting regularly or following uh, a program or a, a going and keeping up with it um, week by week, month by month, as opposed to having long lapses. Uh, we have a few because of vacations and traveling mm -hmm. and so forth, mm -hmm. but I think, I think that's one advantage of, of not, not letting it go for several months and and then trying to get back into it. Mm -hmm. well, I, I think that's valuable. Yeah. You, you know, w one of the other things real quick um, is the, um, one of the things that I think the caregivers have had a misunderstanding about is just that, that sometimes they have, there, there are programs that you go to and then you're finished with the program and then you come home mm -hmm. and uh the program was very good and it's very helpful but what happens is that you then come home and 
that whole structure and everything isn't there anymore. Right. And I right. think that that that's one of the things that I think that that you've been so diligent about that you've kept that progress and that almost that same level of intensity. Well, almost, yeah, uh, maybe not completely, but uh, I will give credit to the the intensive that Don went to here in, in Minneapolis. Um, they did say at the end, he needs, you, you need to keep at it, you know, you need to keep at it. And I, and that's when I contacted you and, and really, really looked into this teaching of talking method because I just, it just sounded like something that, that would work. I, I don't know why I thought that at the time, except that I'd been trying it, but I, I didn't see us going to another intensive. He was discharged from therapy, so what do you do now? Um, and so I think it's been worth it, and, and I, I, I wouldn't do it any different going back. I, I would, and recommend, and I recommend it to just, just about everybody I know with aphasia. <laughs> Um, last point is you're, you're a nurse. Is that right? Yes. Retired, okay. but yeah. Okay. You're RN? Yes. Okay. So you're skilled. You, you were skilled yes. and you still yes. have many of those skills. If you had to, you'd know yes. what to do, right? Okay. Yeah. So last question. This is really an important one. How do you feel your skill level is? Uh, as far as speech hmm. now versus compared to how you were when you first started? Oh, you, you, you mean with the stimulating speech? Oh, I think. Knowing what to do. I, yes. I'm much more confident now. Not to say... I don't slip up or do things that I'm not supposed to, but I, oh, much, I have a confidence uh, in, in knowing how to do it right or get, get the response that I'm looking for um, much more than I did at the beginning. Oh, to I totally did not know what I was doing at first. Totally. Um, yeah, it, there's nobody tells you that. Nobody tells you what to do, other than, you know, here's a communication board and pictures work and 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 that kind of thing. But um, as far as conversing, no, they don't tell it. I I was not told what to do. I observed what the therapist did because I was like. Hard to get rid of. <laughs> uh, the intensive was difficult for me because the caregivers were not not involved at all. They weren't. Um, not not in the any sessions. No. Mm -mm. So that was a little hard. Uh, we could observe one on closed circuit TV, but that was it. Mm -hmm. One hour a day, mm -hmm. the first hour. But after that, um, no. I'm not saying it didn't help him, but yeah. it, it didn't help. Didn't help me. <laughs> Didn't help me. I would, but it's what it was. So. Okay, so let's. So if there was, so you've seen the the difference of being involved totally in lang mm -hmm. speech and language stimulation. I mean, mm -hmm. being a part of the therapy. I mean, actually in the room with the yes. therapist. I mean. You're there as much as I am. You're there as much as Don is. In fact, whenever we do any work at all, you're there. I'm here. Yes. Now, now, do I do all the work when uh, when we have our sessions? <laughs> Some days. Not, not, not all the work, but, but you, you're there. You're there to guide and mentor and and at first and and to show me, demonstrate. So you demonstrate, you mentor, you um, uh, 
I guess correct sometimes in a very nice way. Um, but I wouldn't say you do it all. Any. <laughs> no, in fact, all. In, in fact, the, the least amount of work I do, the better. You know, I mean, if you notice, yes. uh, and I'm, you know, I'm just going to remind everybody here that I, I don't do a whole heck of a lot in our visit. Oh, I, I mean, you know, we converse and everything, well, but, yeah, yeah. but, but I, but I'll, I might say to Deb, I said, Deb, why don't you tell me about your visit to such and such? Mm -hmm. And then I just sit back and, and she stimulates Don for 20, 30, 40 minutes. And I'm just sitting there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And that happens more now than it did at first, of course. But um, yes, I, I, I do. Uh, well, it's good. And it's, it's good for me to do that so that I am kept on track. You can tell me, um, I guess, this, there's a better way to do that or... Um, this is what you need to do because that's when things come up is when you're you're uh, stimulating and and sometimes you're you're forging ahead doing something that is maybe better done some other way mm -hmm. and um, that's come up a few times yeah, yeah. or something isn't working like uh, uh, for instance the putting an ed on the end and 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 it just wasn't coming. So make a, oops, make a, uh, you suggested to make a, a flash card or write it down and hold it up and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so we, things come up when you let people, <laughs> I guess when you let people go and so that you can really help them the rest of the week to, to, put past to make a past tense or future tense or whatever. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so so you know how skilled you are as a nurse and, and you know how skilled you are as an artist. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah. So the uh, the other thing is that you know you you see different approaches and you read about different approaches yes. and you talk yes. to people who are using different approaches. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel your skill level is? As a, as, as a person who kind of knows what to do with your husband who has aphasia. Mm -hmm. I would, I would say my skill level is quite high right now. I I feel like it is. I feel as if I know what I'm doing most of the time. <laughs> Who's back there? <laughs> Go back to sleep. Hey, is that true? <laughs> hey, Tom, is that true that she's no know, she knows what she's doing? <laughs> That's exactly what you said. <laughs> yes. yes, imagine that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to just... I feel like I'm very skilled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do a final statement, and then I want you to do a final statement. And and the, the final statement is that... Um, not much more to say other than what, what we've what we've discussed. It's a it's an intimate therapy. It's a friendly therapy. It's it's a it's a kind of a a, a therapy that that it's almost like if I was anywhere near a hundred miles within their house, you know, I would probably call them and want to stop by for a cold drink of some kind. Some kind of, yeah. <laughs> Many discussions about that. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's as fun and enjoyable as uh, for a therapist. You know, uh, a lot of therapists think that aphasia therapy is you know hard work and redundant and all, but it's not at all. It's 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 really a lot of fun. And, it is. And, and you get to really know people. Yes. 
Boy, you just, you covered it all. Um, <laughs> I, I would say this, that, that I, I really encourage people to try it because it, it is so, it has been so successful for us and I can't believe we're so different than anybody else. Um, and it isn't like you can't do other things also, but I just think that it's the one thing that you can do in your daily life, any time of day, uh, um, you, you're using your everyday activities um, to learn how to speak again. And how wonderful is that, that you can do that. You don't have to wait for that hour every week to practice your speech or, you know, to, to communicate with your spouse or, you know, you, you don't have to wait. You can do it now. And um, as long as you have a, a, a good attitude about it and they're willing to learn, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm any more... Uh, any smarter than anybody else I think I think you just have to have the uh, have to want to do it um, and and want to help and most most caregivers most spouses family members they want to help they don't know what to do and so I just think this is something something that I think they should try <laughs> They should do. They should learn how to stimulate speech and and learn the, the method in the teaching of talking. I really I really uh, believe it's it's something that that has really uh, made a difference in our lives. Okay. Yeah. We, well, you know, as I usually say at the end of our visits. You get an A today. I'm not sure all my grammar was quite correct. But... <laughs> oh. Anyway, well, thank you for the opportunity to tell about our experience in the last two years. Okay. Thank you, Deb, right. very, very much. And regards to Don, okay? Okay. okay. See you. See you next time. See you next time. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye.